Hey everybody, I'm Z-Rex. So in case you didn't know, the director of the Super Smash Bros. games uploads a few pictures every week. So I'm going to go over what he showed this week. The first picture of the week was a trophy of Rayman himself. Sakurai said, in order to make Rayman's trophy, we asked Ubisoft to share their references. We were expecting to receive 2D drawing references for Rayman, but to our surprise, they sent us data of a brand new 3D model that they rendered for this game, and that was how this trophy was created. It takes a lot of work creating each model, so it's wonderful that the creators contributed their own efforts. Now this image has to be the strangest one of the week, because it's a third party character. And it's a big character, it's Rayman. I mean, what? First off, it doesn't look like he's going to be a playable character in the game. He may have thrown this in just to throw everyone off with the new character reveal, but it's still weird to have such a big character as just a trophy. Plus, something that is this important should typically be put up at like a Friday or for a full day. This was only kept up for a couple hours before the new images were uploaded for the new character release. It was almost as if he asked Rayman's trophy to be part of this game solely so he could troll everyone. I guess you can just never predict Sakurai. The next set of images shows the male and female versions of Robin. Sakurai says, Robin the Avatar in Fire Emblem Awakening joins the battle. As a master of tomes in the Levin Sword, Robin's not like any other sword fighter. You can also select Robin's gender when you play. He also continues uh, with a second picture and says, Welcome back, Captain Falcon. When are you ever going to get a new game of your own? So of course these images are pretty exciting because it's two new characters that were just added. If you want to see all my in-depth thoughts on these characters, I do have another video that you can check out. But I do really like that they added Robin in instead of another sword wielding character and the fact that they made it optional to be girl or boy is really interesting. It's something I didn't see coming and not many people did. The one thing that really interests me about these two posts is the Captain Falcon one actually and what he says. Because Sakurai asks when is he going to get a new game? Could it be a hint that maybe a new F-Zero is coming around the track? I just think it's funny that he would ask something like this, unless it's just kind of joking that he never gets a game. But F-Zero was part of Nintendo Land, so maybe it's a chance that it's coming back. I sure hope so. On Tuesday, Sakurai posted three brand new images featuring Lucina. He states, along with Robin, Lucina joins the battle. Her physical abilities are identical to Marth's, it must be in her DNA. However, where Marth's power is concentrated in the tip of the sword, Lucina's attack strength is balanced throughout the weapon, which might make her easier to control. She's also a little bit shorter than Marth. The next image states, With the Wii Fit trainers, the male and female Robins, the Villagers, and Little Mac, varying their appearances and voices works just like selecting alternate color variations. However, whenever there is even a small difference in abilities, that character gets an actual roster slot. That is why you can select Lucina individually. He also says, by the way, there's probably no chance you'll be able to see this in the game, but Lucina has the mark of Naga in her left eye. Although there were three images, this has to be one of the most depressing posts that he's made. It's really a bummer that Lucina is just a clone of Marth. I mean, she is slightly different with where her sword hits, but really, really, I mean, all the other characters are so unique. Why would they put in a clone? It's beyond me. It is, of course, still nice to have a girl Fire Emblem character. And I, I'd prefer her to not just be an alternate costume, so I like it in that sense. I just wish they had added a unique moveset. I do sincerely like that they put the Marka Naga in her eye. It just shows how much detail is going to be in this game. On Wednesday, we got to see an image of the Robins using their attacks. The Levin Sword and Tomes are Robin's lifelines. The Levin Sword can be activated by using smash attacks. You can even activate these moves in midair. However, just like in the original game, the Levin Sword can only be used a limited number of times before it breaks, at which point it takes some time to regenerate. When the Levin Sword is unavailable, Robin fights using the Bronze Sword. He continues to say the way Robin launches arc fire is kind of crazy. He or she calls down a bolt of flame from above them, then launches a pillar of fire. By the way, Robin's tome changes with each special attack. I really like that he explained what Robin does pretty quickly. A lot of the other characters waited a while and everyone, you know, was theorizing what they could do. And here we go. We get to see 
or a better explanation of what goes on. I'm really interested to see how this plays out. I mean, it's such a unique feature to have a limited number of moves and attacks, and I mean, it's something completely different. It does not mention if the tomes are really limited or how it is, but it could be weird to have a character that could be completely overpowered at times, yet also completely underpowered if everything runs out. The next image featured Peach, Pit, and a cat. We have Nintendogs plus cats. How could we forget them? Just FYI, there are about five dog breeds in this game. This was me reporting from the 3DS exclusive stage living room. Okay, this one's just cute. I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna battle a, while like cats and dogs are both in the background. I'm just gonna be like, oh, and then I'm gonna explode. Not much else to say here. The last image of the week featured Mario and Little Mac getting knocked out. Here's a screen KO shot. There are also patterns where players will disappear into the sky for star KOs, but as a match's time limit approaches, those KOs will not occur anymore. This one I really have to say makes me happy because boy do I get frustrated when I'm having a match and I totally knocked out my friend but he's, you know, flying away in the distance and it doesn't count. I could have won, but I didn't. So it's great that they're bringing in this more competitive scene just so they can fix up some of these things. I really like what they're doing with the game, plus it's hilarious that they actually, you know, smush their faces when they hit the screen. Well, that's all there is for this week. Uh, check out the next week's video, and be sure to like and subscribe.